we do bands, we do DJs, we do national acts, we do speed painters, character artists. We do the craziest things. If you think it, we've got it. And if we don't have it, we'll find it. We will not disappoint. That is our promise and commitment to everyone. And have a freezing day. Hi, this is Michael Dervich, Vice President of Breezen Entertainment and Productions, and today I'm joined with Cindy as well as my co-host. Hi. Uh, Excited? Yeah, we got a great guest today. We're going to be chatting uh, with one of our contributing writers from our Breezen magazine, Behind the Hustle Edition, kind of discussing uh, reversing the sloppification of America uh, in the areas of effective communication, professional behaviors, and uh, thriving relationships. And we'll be also chatting with her about her journey uh, and how she's gotten started with her business. I'm um, excited to bring to you at this podcast um, someone we're featuring from our magazine. Um, how timely, public speaking, being scrappy, hustling, uh, sharing ideas to assist others, uh, all are imperative for growth and leadership. Uh, Right, everyone listening? Yeah, right? Everyone. I think it's so. Why do you resonate? It is. Uh, this dynamic leader and woman comes to us as the author of 10 books. Uh, yeah, she uh, knows and believes how you present is how you are remembered. Uh, as the founder and CEO of Presenting Powerfully, her firm provides keynotes, facilitations, and strategy sessions, teaming events, and executive presence coaching. She brings a blend of her professional background with General Motors, Dale Carnegie Training, and Wright Management Consultants prior to her national practice each day since she founded it in Tampa in 2006. She is known to many as a very grateful part of Team Lundberg. Please welcome this leadership coach, life coach, certified image consultant, and Breezen friend to a Breezen Chats podcast. Hello, and thank you, Debbie, for being here. You're welcome. Happy to be here. Thanks so, for having me. So excited. Michael, I, get, Michael, I can't read that. There's some big words in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little dyslexic, so I said, this one's yours. <laughs> but, Deb, I'm so excited. I'm getting to know you a little bit throughout the years, just kind of surfacely getting a little deeper and deeper and... I, um, when we sat down to see who we wanted some to help with our magazine, I, they said, who are some influential people that, and I said, you know, I really like this lady, Debbie. And I said, you know, I'm getting to know her, and you are a true professional. You give back to the community. Thank you. Um, you assisted me with one of my organizations, and I appreciated it so much. I, every time I hear you, whether it's through the chamber, Tampa chamber, South Tampa chamber, I always walk away with so much. Um, I feel like you're a beautiful woman inside and out. Thank you. And I think that's huge. And I am just so excited to hear your story. And I'd just like to start with, can you just start from the beginning? Like, where are you from and how did you get here to mm -hmm. Tampa? Absolutely. Well, it's often fun if I go into a classroom or anywhere I ask people, who knows where Michigan is? In, in the country, and yeah. people say they know it, even small children, I'll say, who knows where Flint, Michigan is? <laughs> and you know what people say, depending on their age, if they're younger, they say, oh no, with the bad water. If they're a little bit <laughs> older, they remember a show from Michael Moore uh, about Flint. And so it's interesting because I came from not quite the ethical, etiquette capital of the world, that's uh -huh. for sure, in Flint, Michigan. and. It's a great place to be from. I like to say where you're born is a starting point. It's a data point. It's not a destination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. And thanks. And I had a ball. I grew up there. And out of my high school, there were five of us who went away to college. So I That's went it. to the University of Michigan and in Ann Arbor and really enjoyed it and just went from there and then left and started working for General Motors and was one of the first females to be quote unquote sent into the field. Isn't that crazy? Like, yes. like we look back now and you go, really? Really? Like it's, move over men. Well, Sorry, Mikey. Well, here's what, here's what happened. I was naive enough not to realize that the, the process was really set up to fail. So I'm this 23 year old, because I'd been there a couple of years, because I graduated when I was 21. So I'd been there and went out down to, I had Southwest Louisiana. And I followed this gentleman, and I probably shouldn't say his name, but he was a sweet, sweet, kind man, Elton Bendel. Wore this green jacket almost every day, went to the dealers with a Bible and his briefcase, 
and I show up with big hair and big High shoes heels. <laughs> and a big like excitement and and they were all like whoa 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 and, and there were dealers in southwest Louisiana that had dirt floors and so I just thought it was the greatest thing in the world and I didn't realize that I was in this awkward place where people just thought oh my gosh we'll just tolerate her and they'll get rid of all of the women and I had such a good time I know because you know you embrace yourself right you know like you don't know that <laughs> I really uh, this is me I'm doing me you've been in bright you. orange suit yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just love that and I think that stays true to you for today as well <laughs> craziness I will say though that I was at a dealer and a few people know this story but I'm I, I share it because I learned so much of what I get to coach now from my own mistakes mm -hmm. and I like people to know that because being from Flint and again no slight on that or to my family or anything I, I loved it but I remember being at my first business dinner and they were all men and so I just followed exactly what they did because I didn't know dining at a kid and things like that so they ordered a drink I ordered a drink they ordered a steak, I ordered a steak. But I was keeping up with these men mm -hmm. until I went to stand up. And I realized I better sit back down because I'd had too much to drink. Mm. And so I just I was just attempting to fit in when in fact fitting in isn't what you do. You you do tend go with your strengths and personality. So I learned that I I I have a few funny stories that I could tell. I mean our time probably isn't long enough, yeah. but, but one of those things happened, and when I was at a dealership in Louisiana, we had the right to go in and look at dealers' books. So in that environment, I remember being at a particular dealership, and the, the dealer said to me, no, 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 he wasn't going to let me look at their books, and I said, I have every right to look at the books, and I, I want to see if I can assist you with something, and he said... My children are older than you are, and I don't trust them with one of my vehicles, so I'm not going to trust you with my dealership. And before I could take it back, I said, don't blame me for your poor parenting. <laughs> and it was this bell really for just, and he kicked me out of the dealership. Rightly so, because that was not the way to go. That was not how you present is how you are remembered, how you want to be remembered. That was young deputy. Yes. <laughs> and at the time, the they were brand new cell phones were brand brand new like they were this they big. were bags and so we had a dial in that you could go to to a payphone so i drove to a payphone i attempted to apologize he said get out never go. come back yeah i get to the payphone to call my manager whose name is pete and i told him what happened and he said i already know and he's i think because he didn't know what to do with a female on his team he said you never have to go back again and I said, absolutely not, Pete. I'm going to go back every month. That was my fault, my mistake. He didn't know me, and I didn't earn his trust. Yeah. But everywhere else I'd gone, they, they acquiesced, they complied. We had a good time. So I thought I could just smooth, 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 smooth my yeah. way in. Yeah. Not smooth, but smooth. But that wasn't very smooth. So anyway, Pete said, well, that's up to you. And I went back for eight months, every month. And the dealer, if he saw me, would physically come out so I could see him and leave the property. And everybody knew. So I wanted so badly to make it right. I sent him letters. I would show up. I would do anything I could possibly do. And in month nine, they had a problem. And I know it sounds terrible. I did a happy dance that they had a problem because I knew I could fix it. Yeah. And if I could fix the problem, they might give me another chance. And the... The, the shortest version of the story at this point is when I left that part of Louisiana and went over to Texas, he said, I'm not saying you were a good district manager, but I am saying you were decent and Aww. we will miss you. <laughs> this was the guy that kept this eating the... the guy, yeah, kept the deal. Out and I said, I'll take it. And he said, really? He said, in the long run, he said, you did a good job. Yeah, you're probably training his people now. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you send one of your books now. Right, right. One of your but multi so you, books. You ask where I'm from and it's... I came from Flint, which it was, at the time, was Buick City. was a lot about automotive and the University of Michigan and then on to General Motors and out into this field of of not really knowing what I didn't know and having a ball doing it, but making 
certainly crossing a few lines and oh, well, figuring it out. You, and nobody's teaching back then. Like, like they threw you into the waltz mm-hmm. and like sink or swim. And, you know, you thank God you had confidence in yourself that you could just keep persevering. It's like I had a little floaties every once in a while. Yeah. But I was trying to, they were trying to sink me and I would like rise back. Uh, yeah, right. it's, it's just crazy. Did you like ever just break down and cry? Did they, did he bring you to tears? He did not, but there were times when I had a, a, a regional management position, I realized after about three weeks in a row of driving home when it was so dark and I was attempting to take on too much yeah. to prove myself. So I remember that. Those were those days where yeah. I would where I would just cry and finally I realized like no one else is gonna change. So how about I change how I respond to the people and what Which I'm doing. It's so smart. It's so true. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's 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 a crazy world. So you did um, General Motors mm-hmm. and then what was your next job? So within General Motors, I worked my way. So I was Louisiana, Texas, Wisconsin, Florida. And in Florida, I got a wonderful opportunity to really grow into a lot. That was when Wayne Hazinga was coming in. And and for some reason, they tolerated or liked me a bit. And I would get to go to some of these events and experiences that were outside of General Motors and really learn a lot even more about the industry. And then I went to uh, Michigan and then did a pilot over in Minnesota. So I was up there in the cold months and then to Chicago for a regional management position. And then I had two national roles. So I, when I left, I was heading up legal and product delegation. Wow. How Ooh. many years are you with them? So I was with General Motors for 14 years. Wow. Oh, wow. 11 of those years, I trained Dale Carnegie at Junkly in all the cities, like in Louisiana and Texas, all over. And that gave really a, a really nice compliment to the dealership side. And that was a lot of the leadership and learning and coaching and being exposed to different businesses, which was really quite phenomenal and there's a man by the name of Don Adams in Chicago and when I got to work with he and his team it was it was just so eye-opening because they're third in the world in their satisfaction and their Mm -hmm. impact wow and is uh, automotive as well no they were they were all over the place and I pitched our regional general manager on my not being in the office on Fridays I said look I have this great team and so I would like to be out of the office on Fridays and teach for Carnegie. So I did day teaching on Fridays oh, wow. to corporations all over Chicago. And talk about another schooling. Yeah. So General Motors had sponsored me for my MBA. And then I got to have that experience. And by doing that, it really brought together this business acumen of the, the General Motors corporate with the Carnegie aspect of individual people and the relationships Mm -hmm. and so I thought perhaps when I'm 40 I'll have a business and and so then when I when I was heading up I actually had repurchased vehicles which doesn't sound glamorous at all and it's not (laughs) I had that as my first national assignment Uh these are lemon law vehicles and we and I love General Motors and I love the people like you will not hear me say a bad thing about my experience there but we really didn't have a handle on it (laughs) and so I had a team in Florida and a team in Michigan. So I lived in Florida instead of Michigan and went back and forth. So okay. that was, sometimes when you're one of the onlys, you get to negotiate some interesting things because people are like, we're not really sure what to do with you, so like okay. It, you're telling us what you're going to do, <laughs> and we're okay. And we're okay as long as you get it done. Yeah. And so Love getting it. these repurchased vehicles from all around the, the country in control and understanding the process of, there's a process to retitle them. And so I came in and there were just these terrific people who hadn't been nurtured that well because they were disconnected and they had, it's almost like sibling rivalry with this group in Michigan, this group in Florida. So I just started bringing them together and they taught me a lot and they were, they were good at what they were willing and able to do. They just hadn't necessarily been giving, given. They needed a leader. Yeah. They needed so guidance. Or... They did a great job, yeah. which allowed me to then take on something else. And and so I met my husband the second time around here in Florida, and they said, all right, Debbie, like this, this has been enough. Like We're going to consolidate everything and move it back to Michigan. 
I was like, okay, and Michael and I were going to get married, and he just said, I don't ever want to live in Michigan. <laughs> I thought, what? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> That's where we're going. What? Well, because I just would go wherever. They said I had a bomb well, wherever I lived. Too. Except I said even in undergrad, I said to my roommate, Michelle, I said, mark my words, I will not live here. In Michigan. Okay. In Michigan. Ann Arbor's beautiful. The university, I love it. I mean, in my heart and soul, I'm a Wolverine. But that weather and that lake effect is not my thing. Ooh. No, look at you, middle of winter and we're in <laughs> spring all those. Right? Sleeveless, right? Sleeveless, right. Yeah. But I do have on my blue, like my maize and blue, so yeah. I'm okay. I love it. I love the necklace, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thanks. So, so when Michael said that, we really had a conversation about, do we want to have our first year of marriage apart? And we don't no, want to do yeah. that. We have so much fun together. And so really... I was there at 33 saying, oh, my gosh, I've had all this experience with General Motors. I was an intern there before. 14 years. That's so, a right. lot of times in the end, it was 14 life. total, right? Yeah. But having a lot of lawyers on your team is not always a bad thing. And then one of my very best friends who was our maid of honor in our wedding, she's an HR guru, and you'd probably love her on your podcast, too. She's – so I talked to her about – would this be crazy to uh, like present a retirement when I'm 33? And she was kind enough to coach me on it, and the lawyers were assisted in writing it up. And when I went, you know, there are layers of executives so deep. Uh-huh. So being a, a baby in that in that role, so to speak, with and a having, woman baby. Yeah. So I I went to Tom and said I pitched him my idea. Because what's the worst thing you can say? No. So I said I don't want to quit. I would like to retire. He's like, if you don't retire at 33, I said, well, I was going to wait till I was 34. <laughs> Here's my offer. So I said I would give seven months in that, look, I'm, I don't mind the word scrappy and hustle. I said, we can find my replacement. I'll fill in for anybody. I'll do anything. And then I won't put you in a bad spot. But I want to realize my retirement now so that I can seed my business. And Tom, conservative, supportive, person you could go to but he wasn't somebody to go off on a on a just a quick idea like that and he'd heard some of mine before right (laughs) so he said if you can get five other people to agree to this at my level or above well i'll sign off on it so i contacted eight people and five agreed Wow. wow so it went into place and i ended up going to austin texas to do some work to portland oregon i was the facilities fill-in manager and put together get uh-huh. this, a disaster recovery program, which I had no idea. <laughs> but you know what? Now I do. So I thought, do I know how to do it? No. Will I figure <laughs> out how to do it? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And I think when you're a leader, that's all it is. It's just, you, it can be any industry bringing right. people together. Right. Anything. It's just getting people to follow you. Mm-hmm. So that's really how you started. what happened. And to my husband's credit, he said, Deb, just... You know, do it now. He said, it'll be successful. And I said, but I'll be 34. Like, will people take coaching and leadership, even though I've had this experience? Mm-hmm. It's unfortunate, but I admit it. I had that stigma in my mind that if I wasn't old enough, didn't have enough experience, how would people buy into me? Because I'm not from Tampa. Mm-hmm. And we love it here, and we loved it then. So I give him a lot of credit for that because, you know, you're going from – where you, where I was with you know, a new vehicle every 60 days, the concierge service, books, set, I mean, just tons of stuff, to zero. To zero. To, like, yeah, you got this money, but I had amassed a ton of it yeah. by that time. Yeah, of course. But he had the he had the faith and confidence in that. And I had a lot of confidence and ideas. You, know? you just didn't know how people would embrace it I in didn't. a new community. I didn't. Yeah, it, it's scary, but you were ready. I was pretty ready, and what I realized is I was ready to deliver. I didn't know how to price and put packages together. And I was was also fortunate to get to work at Right Management Consultants for a year, and I was straightforward with them. I said, I plan to have a business. I will do a great job for you for a year. I want to understand the workings, but I will do everything. And... I think they probably thought, sure, sure, and you'll love it and you'll stay here. And I really did have a great time there and got to do a lot of leadership coaching and facilitation. 
And some things that I found I really didn't like, they do a wonderful job, don't get me wrong, with uh, displacement and when companies are downsizing. Mm -hmm. But I was filling in at times for that. And you talk about crying. I remember being in the car after being present and you're there to assist people. And that I found, I cried in the car on the way home. I I hurt for them and I knew that I wasn't as good as the other people were at doing it. And Mm -hmm. it was... You have to as, have, as yeah. the competitor, like as a, I was an athlete, I've been an athlete since I was four. Yeah. I, I wanted everything to always be the best, and I realized I wasn't the best person to do that. I really wasn't. I, I had, I bordered on the sympathy instead of staying at empathy, and then I just wanted to help them. Wanted like, to help what, what them. Want to come work for me? <laughs> right, right. Like let me fix everything. And yeah, so you can't fix everything. That was a wonderful experience on that leadership facilitation and good to know that that was in a place where I was as effective. Yeah. And I, they, they, but didn't give mm-hmm. you any joy. Didn't give me any joy. I feel like other people could serve the people much better than I could. Mm-hmm. And that was an important lesson because I hadn't heard a lot of that or felt a lot of that by being in situations where I could get through it. And mm-hmm. I thought, this is not a get through. This is too important in these people's lives. Yeah, their whole lives have changed. Their whole and lives have changed. you had to tell them your life's changed. You don't have any, you can't fix it. No mm-hmm. solutions. Mm-hmm. No solutions. So I was there and with Carnegie. And then I, when I realized to start my business itself, I had two non-competes. So I had one with Wright, and I had one with Dale Carnegie Training. And I knew what I was signing when I went in, so I refused to not honor them. Right. So for the first two years of my business, what a lot of people don't necessarily know is I only worked in real estate and mortgage because I didn't have non-competes there. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So for some people, even though I'm in my 13th year of my practice, they feel like I've been around for about 10, and it it follows because people said I didn't... Like, I've only known you for this long. Well, that's because... I realized that some, you can get away with working through your non-compete, and but I just felt like I knew what I signed. I agreed to do it, so I've, I'll find another market. So you kind of respect mm-hmm. and honor, honor mm-hmm. the so non-compete. So just, the non-competes were just in those industries? Well, they were all their clients, and they really, neither one had a big stronghold in real estate and mortgage. Not that they probably don't have some clients, but mm-hmm. I felt like that was a path I could that go. That they wouldn't, that they would, you right. would in their territory. I wasn't in their territory and I wanted to rest well at night knowing that I'd honored my word and and then I still referred people to write. I still do. I still refer people to Dale Carnegie Training because they're wonderful organizations. Uh, so that, the real estate mortgage gave me this this just fresh ground to, and there, was a, there wasn't a lot and I don't know that there still is, but I know there are some experts certainly there wasn't a lot of coaching and Found leadership development. Mm-hmm. So I got to make all these programs that I still use a lot of today because it was just, just a clean slate. Yeah. So that was a ball. Yeah. So you just went out and you started here in Tampa. Mm-hmm. And then, so what did you just start networking? Did you join organizations? Just show up, speak up, be ready. Yes. I mean, I spoke in a church basement to three people in a rainstorm. <laughs> and and I believe it was for fifty dollar donation to something because I would just say yes to everything and I met some interesting people and some people they I found they weren't again I didn't want to cross my lines but I ended up getting an interesting dynamic of unfortunately some women who uh, had just spectacular schooling wonderful people made a choice to not work. Uh, when they had their families, and then felt very out of place and very undervalued. And so I was good with working with that group, and then a, a few of those people had some bigger issues, like with substance abuse. And I started getting connected to psychiatrists, psychologists, and counselors because there was no way that I was going to cross that line of not having the expertise, that it's just it's too serious. And... And so I, I ended up with a lot of individual coaching at first, uh-huh. and then a lot of referrals to just spectacular people in the community who are, I oddly learned a lot about what happens with drug and alcohol abuse and how that can happen, and we don't recognize it. Yeah, that's amazing. Did you ever 
now that your non-competes are over, did you have any desire to go back to those industries? To I have clients, I'm so grateful. I have clients who waited. I have clients who, who brought in the other people I recommended and then came back to me. No way. Uh, I was that with, great? Yeah, I was with somebody last week who he said, remember you trained me in Carnegie? Now, I trained him in Carnegie when I lived here in the ni late 1990s, the first time I was here. Mm. So there are still people, I'm amazed and so grateful that they still come to me. Yeah, I, I think that's wonderful because that's loyalty, that's doing your job, that's caring about your people. Mm -hmm. And that always comes through when you are sincere and you're really their best interest is there. Mm -hmm. And they, they do wait or they do come back or they try something different and they go, hmm. Right. Right. You probably have that as well. Yeah, often. You know, uh, I'm actually finding people are getting more loyal mm -hmm. because the world is so untrusting at times mm -hmm. and people don't know what to believe, who to believe. Before I used to say the internet was, is my, is still my biggest competitor, but it has become so big that people are like, it has to be a relationship. It's too many choices mm -hmm. for it's them. It's too many choices. Yes. And then, and then. Nobody wants to talk to you. And like, I'm real big here. I'm really with my, my, my young team. I'm like, you have to pick up the phone. You have, they have to hear your voice. They have to hear you smile. Absolutely. And once that, then you can communicate any way you want. You want to text, you want to email, but you have to pick it up. Because well, who did, what did Jen say? I love what she said. Intentional. Um, uh, yeah, she was talking about on the emails. last podcast, uh, just one word, uh, someone reading a word differently can really change the whole perspective of a text Positive or an intention, email. Positive intention, she said. Yes, I, I listened to the podcast. I do remember yeah, that. Yeah, and, uh, and I've been listening to that because when the girls get upset, go, God, I think she's screaming at me. You know, keyboard courage. And I go, well, just pick up the phone and say hi. Mm -hmm. It seems like you have a question that maybe it'd be better I can answer it. And that's, I think that's huge, and I think that's why people come back around to us as well, because mm -hmm. we are there, we're solid, same thing, we've been here for a long time, they may, they may cheat on me for a minute, or <laughs> one year, and they'll come back, and you go, you know, it, we could reach you, we can talk to you, we're all, we're available, and I think that's why we've been fortunate, like yourself, mm -hmm. to be around for 30-some years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I sent, I don't know if Cindy told you, I sent her an email a couple weeks ago. That was hilarious. And yeah. you all did our wedding in 2004. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. She did show me that the people, old invoice yes, that was printed out, contract. wasn't it like yeah. trying to uh, still talk about or our wedding. And, and I don't say that in a vain way. Every Our wedding planner, Wendy, she tells us that she still tells people about it because we had a luau on the Friday night. Mm -hmm. Where'd you have your wedding at? Fairwater Beach at the Hilton. Okay. Hilton. And we're there every weekend. <laughs> yes, we had, <laughs> we had wear every crazy color you want. So we had the... You the, had a theme before themes were in. Right. We had the luau, we had the dancers, and they taught us how to dance. We had the, the full pig for the pig roast, uh -huh. and we had a fire eater. And so she came out, and she was just beautiful and amazing and had the most wonderful personality that everybody just fell in love with her and it was so memorable to end our night with that so we loved it so it was super colorful and then at our wedding it was where anything you want as long as it's black or black and white love it and nobody strayed and so people were in long gowns and shorts but it was all black and black and white so it really gave that contrast were you in the ballroom or were you out on the deck so we were out we we're supposed to be out on the deck and that was right after the hurricane oh. And so they had just finished it. So we ended up on the beach itself for the wedding, which so, turned out better yeah, uh -huh. than we wanted. And then we were in the ballroom. Nice. So nice. everybody did a terrific job. But it was so funny seeing that invoice. Well, when she sent that, I go, what is this? What? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Do we have entertainment out? <laughs> yes. And, and I'm telling you, we had yeah, a ball. So, awesome. so we never knew this connection. Yeah. And, until then. and then we did your husband's birthday. Yes. This year, you trusted us again in that. And I appreciated that so much. Um, oh, my birthday. It yeah. was your birthday. Mm -hmm. He called. He handled he, it. Yes, yes, he handled yeah, he handled it. Mm -hmm. What it was a small birthday, right? Oh, my fiftieth birthday. The big Ooh, one. Yeah. Nice I one. love telling people that because they're so too. surprised. Yeah, <laughs> I love like, oh, it. You know, look at day we're twenty five. Well, thank you. Keep talking. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it coming. Talk to me in another few years. <laughs> so, what's in store for the future with your business? Well, thanks for asking. So the future of my business, there's a lot already booked even for this year and next year with long-term engagements with some 
really interesting. I do a lot in law, construction, financial services, and tech. And it's just interesting because if you think about that, there I don't like the expression soft skills when people are like, oh, soft skills. What it is is those are foundational skills. So if you have a real trade, so to speak, uh -huh. it's the foundational skills that we often miss, the communication we're talking about, the relationships, mm -hmm. the behaviors. Michael, you mentioned it at the beginning. Yes that those are what I get to talk about. And so I have a lot of long-term uh, leadership uh, academies and different things that clients have really embraced and they're putting groups through. And then uh, Barb Zant and I have a podcast and a mastermind class called The Business of Life, wow. which is a lot of fun. And we ask people four questions and it's really about how do people embrace. I don't believe in balance. I believe in harmony. Uh -huh. If you're trying to balance your life, you're going to consistently be in this teeter-totter. Mm -hmm. If you harmonize and you think about music, which you all have such expertise yes. in, I like that. that sometimes the person's singing louder and sometimes the instrument isn't being played and that's all okay if it harmonizes. It harmonizes together. I, and I like so that. It is we a really, diff different, different perspective to yeah. look at it. You know, we always think of just the work-life balance and how do you do that, but the mm -hmm. harmonize of it all is, is definitely So are you harmonizing? And if you're quiet for a little bit and someone else is a little bit louder okay. and it still works out and the, the, the song sounds good, let it yeah, be. Exactly. Yeah. So we're, we have that with the master class and we really, we love learning and we're so thrilled to have people on there who are, are going to tell us how they start their day and what they think their extra umph is and what they wish people didn't do and yeah. and then just it's it's been so much fun. Yeah. How long has that been on? So we will launch it this month, but oh. we've batched and nice. done those and things we that we were talking about. Tell the what's it called? So we can. So make... it's called the business of life. Okay. And our philosophy is listen, choose, do. And it's a, for individuals who embrace all that they can experience and learn from in life and in business. Oh, I love that. So we'll have to tell all the subscribers. To Thank please you. Please make sure they go we appreciate and, it. Um, <laughs> subscribe to it. We'll also make sure when we put our podcast up that we have your uh, a link to it. How long have you been doing that podcast? So we decided to do this in October. We also, so, sorry, we have a guest in the house. Would you like to introduce your guest? Sure, this is Barb. Hi, Hi Barb. Hey. Very excited. I didn't realize y'all were doing that together. Yes, so can't, exciting. Yeah, I can't wait to uh, to hear more about that. So, mm -hmm. it start, so you started how long ago? We started in October deciding that we wanted to do this and ultimately have the classes and the, the, the whole experience for life. And we both have a similar philosophy in there's no real competition. Like your podcast wouldn't be competition for ours and wouldn't be competition for others because the best thing you can have are other good stories, stories mm -hmm. and places of inspiration. So the only competition in my practice, I tell people when people want names or something, I say just bad speakers, bad facilitators and bad coaches. Because if, if there's room for everybody who's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when people are good at it and you can share that, it's so energizing and, to yeah, keep it going. And everybody's different. Everybody, everybody's absorbs different. It. everybody learns differently. Mm -hmm. Everybody's personalities are different. Mm -hmm. You know, Some people like maybe black and gray, and then some people like all this color and the big hair and right. the big shoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, right. So that's, funny. we're excited about yeah. that. We've had a really good time. Oh, that's awesome. Getting that have together. Some fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How often do you um, record or do you putting it? I'll tell you what, we've been on it a lot the last few weeks and I haven't even told Barb, but somebody agreed today who's at McDill and she's becoming a colonel and she said she would happily be on. Nice. And so we'll get in over Fantastic. there. Right. So men and women where we're any age, any area, just people who are really Real surprising people. us in, in being supportive and want other people to just grow as well. And yeah. they're, they're not they're not saying look at me, they're saying let me share. Let me share, let me teach, mm -hmm. let me just experience it. You and, just never know what you're gonna learn yeah, from somebody. You, you never know who's in the same situation as that person. Right. Know, different stories, different outcomes come with different people. So you know yeah. hearing a perspective or a story that's it can be just how, one thing that someone says that you go, Wow, light bulbs went on exactly. and you made a difference in 
It's kind of like you listen to Gary Vee every day. Yeah, Gary Vee has an effect, right? Yes. Yes. So something that we do that is, we're having fun with it, Mm -hmm. is the person's on, and then we do whatever, they don't know that, we don't tell them this beforehand, but now they're going to catch on. But for the first few that we're batching. Hopefully none of them are listening. Well, I hope they are, because we're going to promote yours. Oh, good. Thank you. So whatever we take out of what they say, we implement and then we do a podcast without them and talk about what happened when we did what they, their philosophy oh, was. I love that. Very cool. So, so it's like a follow-up. It's to, a follow-up. Mm-hmm. So there's a... It's different. Right. So I we thought, it. what can yeah. we do that's different? And so then we also interview each other. So we're implementing the things that each other talk suggested about, yeah. too. And I'm telling you what, you go out and do some different things because it's like, well, we committed to do this. And we believe in this person, uh-huh. so we're going to do it. And we're going to try it. And then we're going to talk about it. And, yeah. then, and if we have challenges, which we did with one, we talked about it on the podcast. We said, we got, we, we got caught up here, and here's what we're doing to get past it. Because then oh, if people are thinking about it. doing yeah. it. When is the rollout date? So it's this month in March. Okay. So no we specific will, date yet? We don't have the specific okay. date, so please forgive me, because everything's to your point, being edited and put together yes. right yes. now. Yes, yeah. Uh, so, but we committed to March. We said in October we'll we'll take this six months, and it's going to be out there, and we're really proud of it. And we're That's you should awesome. be, yeah. you should, and you're doing something different. Like you're doing something different that you can grow with mm-hmm. and learn with, and. Um, that's uh you just never know i love meeting new people i love hearing their stories and honestly i i have a drive every morning from clearwater so i've been doing that now for almost 10 years and i'm like i've got to do something so i started audible books Mm -hmm. and podcasts and you know every morning i take something it can be so minor and go wow you know the girls get scared when I walk in. <laughs> like, I have so like, woo! And they're like, oh, a great day. And they're like, oh, no, we're not even up yet. You know, she's been up since 4 o'clock in the morning. It's energizing. It, it is. is. You know, and I, you, I try to, I want them to get excited about, about it. But I look at, I just start, I'm going to be 63 this year. Which no one would believe. And I embrace it like you mentioned it. I'm yep. like, it is what it Tell is. Tell everybody. I'm, I'm good, you know. Give me my, you know, color color my hair in, get rid of my grays, and I'm good. But um, I just, I didn't do that. Like, I think about that. I just started that at 60, Mm -hmm. listening to audibles, because I, like I shared earlier, I'm a little dyslexic, so I always kind of shied away from reading. I didn't enjoy it, and it took longer, and school was always hard. So this was like, I got this. And I just wish I had been doing it. I wish someone turned me on to it like many, many years, like sat me down and said, Hey, this is really a good thing for you to try to do. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, I'm trying to share with them and the younger generation and they don't, they're not there yet. You're right. They'll get there. In the past four or five years, really when podcasts and audible started, the Mm self-teaching is kind of the new thing that everyone is doing that you really do have to be on your game. Everything is changing. You graduate college, you still need to be learning, still need to do different stuff. I mean, you can never not learn something new every day. Yeah. You're right. You're right. And then, and also be willing to change your opinion or your view. 100%. Mm-hmm. Because that, that part of it is that open-mindedness and not being afraid to say, what I thought in the past wasn't wrong. It just doesn't work anymore. Because mm-hmm. I think so many people get fearful that if they admit this, that means everything else was wrong. It wasn't wrong. No, there's always something changing, technology, changed. whatever it is. There's am, always a different way or a better yeah. way of doing something. I so. am such a different uh, leader in, than I was when I started. Like, my, my Jesse said to me the other day, God, what happened to you? Where are you? <laughs> she said, <laughs> you are so soft and mushball. I go, you know, it's just, it's just more just more understanding. You know, people's people's... I understand people better now. It's not, it's, you know, you hustle, 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 hustle because you have to. And then you got to stop to start breathing mm-hmm. and smiling and just trying to have some fun. You know, we're, we are very fortunate. We're in a fun industry. Ooh, we're you know, ambassadors we are, of fun. We're ambassadors <laughs> of fun. <laughs> but, you know, we sell fun, you know, and, and we need to make sure people know that we love what we do. And, if, and I really believe, like, 
I don't care how much money you make. If you're not having, or the clients, I will fire clients. I, I mean, if they, I don't care how much money they have or how much money they want to spend, but if they don't treat my girls with mm-hmm. respect yeah. and I'm like, say goodbye to them. Tell them we're just not a good fit. Here's the name of another person. And I'd like to refer you ever to them. I just, it's, this isn't working for us. I think that's really important. And that's something I would never used to do, but I won't tolerate it. I won't. I, I just, I just want everybody to show respect. Be kind to each other. Like I'm so tired of my of vendors in my industry and in the world just not being nice to each mm-hmm. other or cutthroat. There's so much out there for all of us. Absolutely. And we can share. And I'm not a good fit for everybody. We may not be a good fit for everybody, but we'll try really hard. You won't find any other team work harder for you to make your events mm-hmm. a success. But there are just some people that just, it's just not a good fit. And see you later. Bye-bye. Well, think about it. I mean, almost 15 years later, here we're still utilizing your services whenever it's we can. <laughs> yeah. That's a That's just a testament to yeah. how we were treated then. That's awesome. And Thank the you. memories, man. Yeah. It's funny because I'll get people that will call me and go, yeah, I had your husband's band at my wedding. And I go, good <laughs> yeah. like 32 years later like, they're calling back so we must have been something right yeah. yeah now if they want them back yeah they're they're renewing up the vows yeah. that would be interesting that would, that would be yeah that would be really interesting yeah. so yeah so debbie so presenting powerfully kind of tell me a little bit about like the different services you offer for companies kind mm-hmm. of give me the gist of uh of your company yes that's something i could talk about for days uh-huh. right but i'll be brief <laughs> so Four key areas, really, keynotes and talks. So a keynote can be to really engage, uh, inspire an entire arena, you know, thousands of people or a few, really. That's the reason I say keynotes and talks, Uh because sometimes people think, well, we don't really have a a keynote for our sales group. Yes, you you do want that. And then strategy and facilitation, where a a real joy and and a good challenge, I'm not going to mislead you, is getting to go into organizations, companies, groups, and we strategize for their year, their three years, their five years, and really get them to hold themselves accountable to who's going to do it. So we have fun, and there's accountability, and there's a little pushback sometimes because people are used to, we came up with this idea, but we walk away from the retreat. Oh, no, no, no. We're going to hold you accountable. So that keeps me engaged in learning their business. Then teaming and training, I mean, Everything from crazy scavenger hunts to chefs cooking with you with mystery food to lip sync battles and how we tie it back to the Lip sync battles, we're going to have to get back to that later. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely, (laughs) absolutely. And and then executive presence coaching, which is really anything from your life, your business, to your presentation skills. And sometimes people think it's odd when they say this, but Michael, you were with me with a group on Friday, and I just... If everybody could feel confident about public speaking and presentation skills, like I wish I could speak to every seventh or eighth grader, not because I don't love adults, but the confidence that I believe we would be more kind and more thoughtful and less cutthroat because so many people treat people in a way that's a reflection of their insecurity Mm -hmm. because believe it or not, I went through that my very first. Uh, internship. There was only one uh, woman who was a leader there, and I was presenting, and I finished my presentation, and I was so eager to hear what she said, and I said, how did I do? You know, What did you think? She goes, I don't know. It's so hard to listen to you because your voice is so squeaky, oh and you look so young. It's my last, I'm like, look, I have goosebumps. Yeah, just talking she about was it. like, yeah. And when I went back to... Um, to undergrad and I went back to class and I was a communication major (laughs) people started saying to me are you okay because I stopped speaking up Uh I started doubting myself because I idolized her your confidence she chipped away and and I'm a confident person yeah very and so I know that in that it took me a while to overcome that that was one person to me and I think if that happened to me, think of all the other times that somebody makes a flip comment, 
cut you off when you're driving, does these things that people take so personally because yeah. we're people. Okay. So yeah. when people say don't take this personally, it's like, I'm a person. I'm going to take it personally. Yeah. Like, how else am I supposed to take it? So that's really where my passion comes from so much of this is... And it, she didn't even give you any... Let me help you. Right. Nothing to make it how you could make it better. Mm -mm. Or, yeah. No. Shame on her. And when I came back... Did you get back to her and tell her yet? Well, the interesting (laughs) story to tell you how this came back is... So I came back as an intern again. And I said to her, I see you took this Dale Carnegie class. Do you think I could possibly take it? She goes, I don't know. It's a big investment. I'd have to see. And I was so excited to get something... And she said, well, we're going to let you do it, but you have to take it at this other facility. So I didn't get to take it with anybody I knew, and I'd have to drive to this other facility, which I didn't realize until later she was attempting to ostracize me. Advertise her. And so I also found out later when I was a leader there in a position that everybody could go to Carnegie. This wasn't anything special. She could... Everybody she just could had do something it. out there out to get you somehow. And yet she, she had jealous. She yeah. befriended me and so I thought she was my mentor. And that's another reason I like mentoring and giving back is because I thought she was my mentor. And I still learned a lot, so I'm not saying that it was all for naught. But by going to this other Buick location that was different, I met some amazing people. And then I became an assistant and eventually ended up teaching it where perhaps I wouldn't have. So in the long run, it served me well. But That's awesome. that rocky road and that that feeling like I let her down was so to my core that the coaching, the teaming, the facilitation, and the, and the keynotes, it's all about being present, being engaged, and being the best at what you're doing in front of you because if you let someone have the power to take that away, I personally know how it strips me. So that's something people and it don't expect. And your whole It ended platform. up being un- unknowingly right? at the time. It really moved me into this place. And there was a professor, uh, and his name is Dr. Vincent Price, and, and, and he was at Michigan at the time. And he let me come into a class that I didn't have all of the, the prereqs for, but I petitioned and asked him, and he was very kind and and that's where I regained a lot of confidence in how he had us interact in this class Mm -hmm. every every Tuesday and Thursday you had a paper and you spoke you had a paper and you spoke and so in his feedback was so constructive that I looked at those extremes and thought if you're intentional about this you can assist people I'm you all know I'm direct Mm-hmm. So I don't tell people, hey, that was great when it wasn't. I'll say, this is what was great. And if you want to improve this, you may want to do this. But I wouldn't say it in another way because... To discourage them or to no. hurt them. Yeah. No. Yeah. So I, all four things people say, well, what do you love best? I do enjoy all of them. If there were one thing... If somehow in the world there was this this movement that said you can only do one thing in your life, right. I would I would say then fine. I will happily do presentation coaching because that will be where people will gain the most. Nice. By that yeah. investment in themselves. What do you do for fun? Well, anything I can do with Michael, our, our team member, we have quite a bit of fun. And we're <laughs> usually golfing. Yeah. And a few people know that we're both very competitive. So we play each week. We're probably, the, we're some of the only <laughs> people in our, where we live who don't, we don't have a service for our lawn. And people tease us hey what's going on you guys being cheap or you know just joking around like our neighbors we have drinks with and but what we do every week that we golf we play handicap and whoever loses most the lawn oh so it is pride and action (laughs) we don't have a self-propelled mower i mean it's like we this is the ultimate (laughs) (laughs) we're not buying one either so when that 18 pole comes it means it's down to business and i am a press like you, if I play cards with you, I'm in every, I'm in every game <laughs> and then I'm either winning or I'm out the first one because I just like to be in the mix. Yeah. So I'll be a double or nothing. Let's press on this hole. And Michael's like, Debbie, you're down by four. And you you're press. cutting the lawn for a month you're right, already. You're right. Exactly. <laughs> so, so it's, it's really fun. And he and I love to travel and we love to entertain. We like to have people around. It's nice so, that your job allows you to travel as well since mm-hmm. you do enjoy it so much. What are some of the, yes. uh, the your favorite places that you've been to? 
So we were at the Greenbrier. We did a little trip this summer, and we went to two of the oldest hotels in the United States. So we went from the Greenbrier, mm -hmm. and we went to that golf, the golf tournament there, and then we played right after. Of course, we want to play right after the pros. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. And, and you had to beat them. <laughs> of course. We, well, we play with our handicaps, but... And so we had that experience, and then we went to Mackinac Island and went to the Grand Hotel, which is the oldest hotel in Michigan. And oh. So sometimes we'll come up with an oddball theme, but Michael, uh, each year at the end of the year, right around the holidays, we go on our personal pub crawl. We take one night, and we Uber, Lyft to International Plaza, and we go from place to place and have a drink and an appetizer, and we reflect on the year, and we plan for the year. Oh, wow. And it's a lot of fun. And I asked the question, like, you know, what was your high of the year? What was your favorite experience? And is there anything I can improve to be a better partner and wife? And one year, Michael said, it, you know, I really wish you would stop saying things like, okay, well, I'll be with you for a week in Denver. I'm just going to fly to D.C. and speak for one day, but I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> because I enjoy what I do so much. Yeah. And I took it to heart. And I said, okay, we'll stop doing that. Thank you. And then you may want to plan these vacations out farther. <laughs> so he locks me into usually eight trips during the year. And some of them are short and some of them are longer. So he's a wonderful planner. That's and perfect. I'm a wonderful shower-upper. <laughs> That's what you want because you're doing, you're planning all year long. <laughs> right. So <clears throat> he does that. And so we make sure we carve out that time. And then you, that's done. You can't mm -hmm. take any, any engagements and you're committed. Yes. It's and a, I honor it's on the calendar. it, and mm -hmm. he plans it. So we have, this year, we go to Hawaii every other year and love to explore there and, and certainly golf and hike and do different things. Uh -huh. So we're looking forward to that. We've, Is that this year? That's this year. Mm -hmm. We've got a few golf courses on the list of places that we want to play. We so enjoy spending time with my Aunt Connie and, and my, we call, we call my Uncle Brad Mr. Brad because we were on... We went to Alaska, and we had a very good time, and it was beautiful. And so we feel like you explore and you you max it out while you're on vacation. Yeah. We, you can sleep a little bit, but just to recharge. There's no rest for the weary. So we would know. My my uncle's going to just crack up when he hears this. but So he get jump, my uncle jumps in the pool every morning, wherever he is. They live in California. Uh -huh. So there we are. He jumps in the pool. And the woman who who'd been our waitress and she was just adorable, she would say, Mr. Brad's had three Diet Cokes today. We we're like, oh, Mr. Brad had a long night. <laughs> <laughs> so so my aunt and Mr. Brad, so they'll be here for Easter. We usually go out and see them. We were in New York with them uh, to, to see some shows and hang out. So we'll, if we're not, we're participants is what we like to say. Like if you invite us, we're and we can go. We're going to do it. I love that. We're going to do it. So you live in life. It's so important. Mm -hmm. I, I, it, you know, when you, especially when you own your own business, that's what you're supposed to be doing. That's what you work hard to do. Mm -hmm. So I admire that you're actually doing it. So many of us get just caught up in it and can't and can't get away from it. Do you have a team or are you solo in your company? It's, it's me and then I do outsource some projects. I have a couple of people who I 1099 who I trust their style mm -hmm. and they'll, their delivery and mm -hmm. I have a really nice relationship with them. And Michael's great at a couple of, of topics. He's really good at a couple of the topics and sometimes I'll take a day off and deliver. That's awesome. And, and those that he's good at, he really enjoys it. He's He's an excellent leader, and he has that enjoyment for some of it. He doesn't want to do this himself or, or pursue that, but, hey, he's great at it. And he, believe it or not, he falls in sometimes, and people, I'm sure you are not surprised, people love him when he does it. Yeah. And, and he's such a great audience for me because he'll hear things and give me feedback, which is nice, that I'll say, will you listen to this first? Because I say, practice on your team. You don't ever practice on a client. Mm -hmm. So everything I do is tailored. While I offer those four things, you're not going to hear the exact same talk, the exact same teaming. So he, believe me, he's, he's lip synced and, and watch across rocks to pretend. And I'm like, well, see how this plays out. And he'll, <laughs> he'll go along with, he's built things. And That's awesome. So he's a, even though he's not in my business, he, he's a great team member for me. 
And he'll also tell me like that is that story is not going to work. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I don't know where it got really is. I don't but know where it got really that one. It, Yes, yes. So, so you take fun. criticism criticism well. I take criticism well when it's constructive and it's feedback. And I also tell people, I'll say, you know, while I appreciate where you're coming from, you may want to rephrase that with me. Because you, what do you get sensitive or I, I'm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it probably goes back to that. That woman. It, it could. I mean, and not to blame <laughs> her, but my just personality overall. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes when you are, like, I love feedback. I love it. I love it. I love it. And if I don't win, a, win an opportunity, I'll ask for feedback. And I don't defend it. I'll think, wow, could I change that? Or And is it worth it? And I'll tell you what. Some of the feedback I've gotten over the years has been so useful. So I do love feedback, and I do hear criticism harshly, and I know how to turn it around. And if somebody keeps coming at me like that, especially someone who I haven't asked for it from, I'll then be like... Then stay away from them. Mm-hmm. Not your, yeah, no, right. not your best interest. But believe me, I welcome it. Because if somebody sees something and they don't tell me, I can't yeah. and decide so many if I can people, fix it. And yeah. so many people don't want it. They want to avoid really helping you mm-hmm. like you you gave me some good feedback one at one of our events and i really appreciated it and i took it to heart and i respected where it came from and weighed it all and it, it made a difference you know we were able to fix a small very little problem before it got out of control so i appreciated that thank you and think that's the thing is if we if we see nine things that are great and then we position the one of you may want to do this because of this it's truly feedback and if we say, oh, it was good, but this happened, mm-hmm. all we hear is what comes after but, the yeah. but. And then you shut down the person that's telling you. You do. Yeah. It's very similar to your presentation you did on Friday with all the numbers. And then yes. Adding up one plus one equals two, and the next slide was three plus three equals six, and the next one was four plus four equals seven. And everyone in the crowd was like, no, 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 no. Didn't really kind of want to say that, oh, two plus two did equal four, one plus one equal two. But when the three plus three equals seven came up, yeah, they were they wanted to mention the bad and not any of the good that had happened. So mm-hmm. it's very a very similar example there. Yeah. Yeah. Do you prefer speaking to small groups or large groups? I enjoy them both. The reason I like a small group is I can really engage. Yeah, one on one. One on one, and use examples and spend some more time. The large group, like a commencement, like the first commencement address I ever gave, there were about 1,500 people there. and and Where was it at, Michigan? No. Oh, oh I wish. Not Michigan State or Ohio State, right? <laughs> no, but would I, would I turn that down? <laughs> oh, I'm a Big Ten girl, so I would go. Okay, I would okay. Go. So if they're listening, please ask. <laughs> uh, but in that sense, I really take that responsibility to heart, and I think... I have an opportunity to potentially connect with more people. So I love it for those reasons. And what happened after the commencement address is quite a few parents came up to me and said, thank you for saying that for our children. Because I was, I I tell them about some mistakes I made and some challenges. And I talk about five things like you matter, you make a difference and you make choices. And, mm-hmm. and I walk them through these stories of my, of my life that give them in the, the, the base of it, like that perspective. And hearing that made a big difference. And when the students, it might sound being, but when they want, they're like, can I get a picture with you? It wasn't that, oh, you're going to post it and tag my social media. It was that it touched them. And so I feel like small or large, if I get a connection from someone, it fuels me because I feel like if I can be in the background somewhere making a little difference, it might get them to hear something or do something differently. Mm-hmm. Like I have a huge joy in being somewhere in the background. Even though I love being on a stage talking, I love that somebody might take it somewhere else. Yeah, yeah and you nice. never know what that one little difference that someone will create for someone else that will create for someone else. Yes. So it's pretty, uh, it's, pretty... It's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. But I'll tell you my biggest flop. <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I'll take it. Conference in Las Vegas. You know? And this is what like starting a, jo- a joke with the guy walks into a bar, right? So conference in Vegas. And I had this story that I was so excited about. I think I, I told a little bit of it Friday. So two, like 2,000 people, I'm the opening keynote, and I'm all ready. 
And then they say, I get down there, and these people are, you know, like toothpicks popping their yeah, eyes open. Been up I forgot that they're in Vegas, so that I, yeah, I really didn't think this through well. <laughs> and I own it. So I'm getting ready to go on as the, the opener, and they said, well, before you do, we have this special surprise. And I thought, surprise for me? <laughs> no. They, these people are like IVs of coffee, right, trying to stay awake in the audience. They dim the lights to almost nothing. And this lovely woman comes out in this neon costume and does this gyrosphere to yeah. music yeah, yeah, where yeah. it's like boom, boom. But it's like this melodic music that is either you're into it or you're asleep. Yeah. And then they bring up the lights and they bring me up. And people are like, what was that? And, 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 and it's chat in the way. Vegas and they're trying to stay awake and it was peculiar. And then I tell this story that <laughs> went over well. And Michael did hear it, so he's in on this too. We thought it would go <laughs> over well. But it's like the know your audience moment. So this story, you could hear a pin drop. And when people say that, I never really knew what it meant until I told this story in Vegas at you know eight in the morning or eight fifteen at that point, and it failed. It flopped, and I just said, "Well, that's as funny as I'm going to be for the next forty five minutes," <laughs> and everybody started laughing. Oh, you did because it! Because I was like, "So if you want to laugh, just laugh now." And thank goodness, instead of my trying to like, "Oh, you guys are you know yeah. you should wake up." Nope, I just thought. You just bombed, and you better own it. And so I did, and it was, it was the biggest flop to the biggest laugh probably I've ever heard from, like, that split second. But talk about a lesson learned because small audience, large audience, that would have been so much more palatable with 10 than 2,000. Yeah. <laughs> but there I was, little peanut up on stage, right, with but nobody was, laughing. Yeah, and That's you never funny. go back. What stays in Vegas stays. <laughs> what did they say? What happens in Vegas Amazing. stays in Vegas. Boy, I just broke that rule, too. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> what, what's the biggest um, group you spoke to? That, that, group, that was it. That group. Yeah, yeah. yeah, a few of them have been a few thousand, yeah. and that's the biggest. And then, then McDill, well, it happened to be at McDill, but they did this event called Lift X. Mm -hmm. So it was the TED Talks for for the military. And they said there was about 11,000 people who could all be in watching. So physically, they weren't all there. But that was a terrific honor. And, you know, here's a good lesson, too. So I wasn't the first choice. And, you know, in life, I might have not been the first choice for every job. I have no idea. And it, I, when people get upset, like, well, this person didn't take the job, and now they're offering it to me. Well, don't be offended. Be glad. Yeah. yeah. So what happened was, and, and I'm, I'm so thrilled, Tony Dungy was supposed to speak. Ooh. And he's a wonderful speaker. He mm -hmm. is, I mean, I'd listen to him any chance I get. And so what they said to me is, our colonel who, who recently left, she She's amazing. She was, and she apparently was a fan, and we really liked each other, but I didn't know that she was... She wanted me to speak in it, and so, but the committee said, you know, we're looking for a bigger name, and I'm okay with that. Like, look, I'll, I'll take where I am and keep growing. So Tony Dungy was asked, and when they came back to me, they said, April really wanted you, and we had this, but we had this opportunity to get Tony Dungy, and, and I was like, if I were you, I'd take Tony Dungy too, <laughs> yeah. right? So I said, hmm, have dinner with me or Tony Dungy. I get it. And not that they're having dinner, but I as a speaker. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, I'll tell you what, though. And they, they were so kind. They said, we're going to send you a ticket to come, though, because you've been so kind to tell us that you were willing to, and since we got him and you've been gracious. I said, all right, well, if anything changes or anything happens at the last minute, you just let me know. I can step in. I can be an usher. I can be behind the stage. I can... I'll do whatever because I so appreciate the military. Yeah. And so two days before, they said Tony Dungy is not able to come now because he had a different engagement. I, and I believe it was a television engagement with a contract that he couldn't, he get, couldn't, out get, out that he couldn't get out of. And um, because I know he's a person of integrity, so it had to be something like that. And they called me. I was walking into a lunch. And I was like, absolutely, I'll do it. I'm already coming down there. <laughs> so it's like, sure. So two days before and to get to do that. And so that is the potentially largest audience, but I don't know really how many people yeah. tuned in. But again, just anything for the military. That, yeah. That's my thought. That is, I have a few soft spots and that's one that's of them. One of them. Yeah, yeah, I've heard some of your, I've watched some of your YouTube channel and uh, I've seen some of your, uh, your, your presentations live. Yeah. 
Um, I kind of want to circle to a, maybe a little different division for you. It's your author, being an author yes. of 10 books. Is there a big difference from how you present yourself in public from being uh, an actual author and writing books? And kind of how did that inspire you? I was in Chicago and I was in my office and Phyllis was my administrative assistant. She sat right outside of the office and, and she was a gem and she was so tickled that she was working with and for, but really with a woman because she had it in her whole career. Mm -hmm. So I was talking to this guy, Chris, who was at our ad, ad agency and I really am getting to the answer. Uh, <laughs> and I, I signed off on a $30,000 invoice, and that might not sound like a ton of money, but I managed the budget like it was my own money. Yeah. So I was agreeing to this, and I said, okay, so we're all set. And he said, Chris said, all right, have a good weekend. And I was waiting for a thank you, and he said, bye, and we hung up, and I said, I had my hand on the phone, because it was a corded phone. I had my hand on the phone, and I said, I'm gonna write a book one day. This says, have a nice day is not thank you, and no problem is not your welcome. And Phyllis popped her cute little head in, and she said, are you really? And I said, yeah, I am. She goes, when? I said, I don't know, but I'm going to write a book about, about that. Subject. that. Yeah, I love it. And so that was in 2000, about 2001. Uh -huh. So I didn't write my first book till 2007. So it was in my mind and I started submitting articles to places and getting some accepted, some rejected, some just into a black hole and then started working these in in Carnegie like just ideas that I had and then I started writing a tip, an email tip to people who wanted them and that became the first book and I really wanted to have the book because I made that commitment to Phyllis. Love it. Really that yeah. was part of it. Phyllis? You still in touch She's with Phyllis? no longer with us Aww. but um, but I did, I thought, I made this commitment. Believe it or not, like I thought, I really did. And then secondly, it assisted me with that, with that credibility when I would be a non-known name and I could send a book ahead and stand by that. So there were mistakes in the first book though. At the first book launch, I had a client who was so kind, Megan, to host this book launch and I had somebody else do the cover, and that was my own fault. So it wasn't her fault that there were mistakes on it. It was mine because I trusted it and didn't have the final say. So that in and of itself was a learning because people were buying the book, and I saw them when they pulled them out that day, and I saw the mistake. The mistake and, uh, and I thought, you know, smile and, and own it and get through it and learn the lesson. Yeah. So carrying myself differently, I feel like, there's there's a vulnerability to it because you can certainly read my books and see if I practice what I promote. Mm -hmm. I like to say no preaching required, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I do. I mean, I I live what I say, and I, I think the the only thing that's sad about it is sometimes people will say, well, I don't want you to see me do this, or I don't want to eat with you because I don't want you to see that I make a mistake. And I'll say, I don't believe me. I strive to not judge, and I'm not perfect though, of course. I mean. But I strive to assess and learn. And if somebody wants feedback, I'll give them feedback. But I'm not sitting there going, this person shouldn't be doing that, that person shouldn't be doing that. Instead, I'm thinking... Maybe they'll learn from it. Take yeah, we can from learn it. from it. Or I can write about it or yeah. speak about it. Yeah. And so the whole thing with the books, then it became... People kept saying, you say all these cool things, what do you say? So I called them Lundbergisms. I love and then, it. I love it. <laughs> right. In the book. And then there were more Lundbergisms. And there probably will still be like, but wait, there's more Lundbergisms type of thing. <laughs> edition, 45. edition 45. Edition <laughs> 45. Yeah. Are you on book 11 yet? I'm not. I don't know what it will be. I am so thrilled and really proud of the Beyond Networking 101. That was one that I've had in my mind, <clears throat> excuse me, for so long. And it didn't take me the longest to write it, but the people who were kind enough to work with me on editing it really pushed back on some things and really challenged me. And but I stand by all 101 do's and don'ts in that book. 
and the book launch that the South Tampa Chamber was kind enough to do. It was so much fun. I missed that. I was really sorry. I missed that. Well, well, we had a good time. I know. <laughs> Without I'll, you. I'll happily, I'll happily <laughs> cover it with you. So I'll say I don't know. I don't know what I'll follow it up with. And yet I, I think there may be another, another, another one. Yeah. yeah. Another one. But, boy, that's fun because people will be like, wait a minute. And there's a good amount of – it's provocative enough in the book to give you some – questions and it's informative enough that people have sent me notes and called me and said this made a difference i did this nice so that uh, yeah I, nice. I believe it because i know i've heard you at the like i said it i uh, forget what they call the one at tampa chamber the, oh the, the the um competitive edge competitive edge and Thank you i for going yeah, yeah i I think two or I think you've spoken several times mm -hmm. and I've gone I think both times I think that's and I, I always walked away with you always walk away right oh, you always walk away thank you and I do too I get to learn from the questions people ask so that little selfish part is I love it when someone asks a question because there's this part of me that thinks well I'll see if I know <laughs> and if I don't I'm going to learn something yeah or we'll teach you a thing or two exactly yeah. this so, is this was really amazing. I well, really you. enjoyed. It was, it, was, um, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, learned so much. I mean, we have. I had so many more other questions I wanted to ask. Um, Do you want me to tell you about the Africa video? Yeah, yeah. that's what that's I wanted to get back to before. Background. There was actually two things okay, I wanted sure. to hear a little bit about. One was your lip syncing video with your husband that's singing like Toto to in about. Africa. Oh my gosh. And then the other one was about you being a uh, Olympic torch bearer oh, as yes. well. Wow. So yeah. can you kind of shed some light on those two things? Um, <laughs> two be, very different experiences. Yeah. 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 Wow. I'm a little jelly. <laughs> so uh, let me tell you about the Olympic torch first. And, and um, because it's, it's, it's an honor as it is, it's, it's very emotional. Mm -hmm. And the Toto video will, will leave us on the, the high of... of <laughs> The story I'll tell you with that. Yes. So with the Olympic torch, and, and I didn't know this before 2001, but there's a theme every year, and and so people write in to nominate people. And so in 2002 for the Winter Olympics, the theme was inspiration. And a friend of mine, Patty Lukes, who just retired, and if you ever see a picture of us, we're likely in front of a Wienermobile because... We, we tend to be places where the Wienermobile is. I don't know, but she's a ball. <laughs> she's just a riot. So she wrote in about the fact that when I lived in Madison, I'd broken my right leg and ankle because I skydived a lot. And, and I thought I'd twisted my ankle, but it's not glamorous. I landed, and I was daisy-chaining my rig. And when I was carrying it in, I was watching someone, and I stepped in a hole. I mean, it's like it's like the worst skydiving story. It's not like this great, like acrobatic. Like, no. Parachute nothing. didn't open, and you had to land awkward. Nope, no, just a hole. No, you should. I mean, the stories I could tell of other things, but but anyway. So she wrote about. I lived there in Madison. I didn't really know anybody. I had a broken leg and ankle. I was in a wheelchair. I was teaching Dale Carnegie training, getting my MBA, and I lived in a three-story townhome, and it flooded. I mean, it was like, what in the world did I do in this world? And yet I just thought, just keep going. And people came together. And I think the lesson I learned was rely on other people. Um, but she wrote about that. And they selected, selected me. And this, this young woman said, I'll tell you the reason we chose you. Because there were all these really spectacular stories about people overcoming adversity and cancer and being born into some really horrific situations. And I really felt unworthy, although I, it was an honor. I realized in that moment that I felt like I didn't belong. And it's, it's not a feeling I have a lot. And this young woman said, we chose you because you live your life each day inspirationally. That's and amazing. she said, you know, sometimes you just, you want to take somebody who... It's not grand. It's just real every day, yeah. every day person. And I thought, okay, you know, it was it was really something that to this day I think yeah. about. You know, you go, you're like, I'm almost late. Uh, that person's a little ways away, but I want I hold the door. I'm like, I'd rather hold the door than be late. Yeah. I mean, I and be late. I mean, I'd, I'd rather do that than be on time. Forgive me, I said it we know backwards. You know. But it's that thought of. I just, you just don't know. We talked about it earlier, the impact you're having. And I have this theory. I run on Bayshore two days a week. And um, 
and I'll give a shout out to my Fabian Mafia at Orange Theory because they'll be like, you didn't mention us. <laughs> right? So I see them the other days. But when I'm running, I have this be friendly on Bayshore. Speak to everyone because you might be the only person that smiles at them. Who smiles and talks to them all day. Like you don't know what's going on. And a little bit of safety because I could identify them if something weird happened. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but I think so. The Olympic torch was a true honor. And I just thought it'd be cool and fun. And I even contacted the Olympic committee because I didn't want to wear the hat. I wanted to know if I could make the hat into a headband. This is how silly I was about it. And they had to get back to me. And they agreed that I could. Oh, my God. <laughs> so if you look. see the picture, I have this massive we'll hair. I'll have to look at it. But this headband, and everybody else has a hat. <laughs> I don't do hats, okay? <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, God, I mean, Jenny. I'll wear it if you want me to. And I look back and I think, you little stinker. And after the whole experience. Everyone else in the um, world. <laughs> and that's what you mind if I make where, it. where was this at? This was in Chicago. In Chicago. Okay. And uh, for the jazz for the jazz listeners and lovers, I got to run more than twice the distance in and pass the flame to uh, Ramsey Lewis, who oh. was a Ramsey Lewis trio, and, Amazing. and have stayed in touch with him. And he he was just everything that is grace when we spoke, and it, it was just phenomenal. So, so cool. that experience was way more than I ever anticipated, and I'm so uh, I was humbled by the people who came out, and I was so excited to yeah. represent our country. country. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. You've some very amazing things, but I think the next one's going to be Yeah, hey. so yeah, so tell us about your YouTube video of you and your husband um, in Africa doing a lip sync of Toto throughout yes. the whole trip that you guys were on. So picture this. It's about three days before we're leaving for this two-week journey to South Africa. That, of course, Michael has planned to the T, not me, right? <laughs> yeah. And I go in to see one of my clients. And he said, I have, I have an ask of you. And what I was thinking in the background is, I absolutely will do whatever. He's a great client, and I really admire him as a person. We're canceling the trip. Yeah. <laughs> and yet I was thinking, I hope he doesn't ask me to get something for his kids. Because we were only taking this one bag for two weeks that we could carry everywhere. And yeah. So I was excited, but like, uh-oh. I hope he doesn't ask me like to get some big, like, get this big giraffe head thing. And, you know, and I thought, okay. And he, I'll never forget it because I know people can't see us, but he turned his screen and he played this video of, of Africa. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'm like, so what is it you want? He's like, this. I said, what do you mean? He goes, I think you can do this better. Like, you can do, you could lip sync this song. And I said, oh, okay. Is I that said, a well, challenge? My, exactly. <laughs> I said, if Michael's in... I'm in. I'm in. But I said, how will we do it? How will we put it together? He goes, I'll figure that all out. I said, oh, you know how to do it? He goes, no. But if you do the clips, the I'll figure it out. So I talked to Michael, and he said, yeah, that, that sounds like a good idea. And But that's where it ends. And so then we get to we get to the airport, and we're taking the longest flight that Delta has, the 16-and-a-half-hour flight from Atlanta. Ugh. So I said, let's start it now. So I see, I'm, I'm in Atlanta a lot. I know that in the international uh, sec area that they have at all of the continents. So I'm like, let's go up there. And Michael goes dark, like quiet. <laughs> and I'm like, film me and I'm going to take a lot. You know, I'm, I'm lip syncing and it's going to be great. And he wants nothing to do with it. Oh, my God. He, so now I said, wait a minute. The time you told me this would have been when we were back and I could tell my client no now you've told him yes we've so, accepted the challenge so Michael said well you do it and I'll film you and I said no way he's like you'll be great you'll be great I'm like, I'm like this coaching is not working <laughs> <laughs> so I said come on how about just how about we'll just one he said no now I'm thinking uh oh I don't want to let this person Todd down I but and I don't want to I don't want to ruin our trip over <laughs> it but then I was like wait a minute we had a conversation. I said to Michael, whichever you decide, I'm good with. And he said, yes. So, you know, this flight, I'm thinking maybe on the flight. Michael says, no. We're, we get there. And first we went to the place where there are only 10 chalets. They can only have 16 people total. So you're getting this wonderful attention. 
and an elephant has gone by our chalet and there are the prints there and Michael sits out on, on this rocker and he goes, if you want me to do it, I think I could do it here. So he's willing to be in a rocker <laughs> in a chair. So I thought, I'll take it. So I play the whole song and have him do the whole song. Because I thought this might rocker. be might be it. But he's he's doing a really great job. He's into it. So I thought, if nothing else, I can do all these others and Todd will put Michael in. But we start doing it. I'd say, how about just here? And we'd be over there. And the giraffe. There's a giraffe. Yeah. And then we're waiting on our guide. And then we're at breakfast. And, you know, there might have been alcohol involved. I have to look twice. at it. You didn't, did I you send it to you? Yeah. Yeah. So in the end... We do it everywhere. I mean, Cape Town, we're at, you know, Zulu, we're here, we're there, we're all over the place. And at one point, sun is setting, and you, you might notice this part, and we're at uh, this lodge, and I go so far back that it is a straight down cliff. <laughs> and, you know, different countries have different regulations for how things are, and I really didn't realize how close. Now, I'm not saying I was going to fall off, but yeah. yeah. But yeah, you it, felt like it. But it was really close because I was so into close it. Close enough for people to con be concerned about right. it. Right. <laughs> and we didn't want to negatively impact anybody else's trip, and we didn't want to ever look like it was insulting because we just weren't sure. We wanted to be very respectful of the culture. So some of the people who were working at the chalet at first, I said to them, please know we're doing this for as fun, but we're not making fun. And they said, we love it. And then they asked if they could put some things on us. So in some of it, when you see the headdress and things, no. they asked us if they could because we certainly didn't want to be disrespectful. Yeah. And then they loved it. They let us go in this fire pit, you'll uh -huh. see. And, yeah, and I only, only watch half of it, so the little... Uh... Yes. Little teasers you gave me there. I'm gonna have to watch the end of it. Well, it was a ball, and I'm grateful that Todd challenged us, and he did a spectacular job. He does a little threes company introduction at the beginning. That's <laughs> he did a wonderful job. Then there are outtakes. If you didn't watch the outtakes, there are Not outtakes yet. at the end. I mean, you got a lot of viewers. So I don't really know. Um, <laughs> we found it. We attempted to put it on some social media, but they won't let you because we didn't have the rights to the, to the song. song. So I said, I'll I'll write to Toto. I'll ask for the rights. If they say no, that's okay. But yeah. they'll probably get a kick out of this. So I haven't heard back. It could be like the new Toto Challenge when, when everyone goes to Africa. So this was a great was... thing. Pat in that. Right. The Toto Challenge. <laughs> the Toto Challenge. So, so, yeah, this has been over uh, almost, well, a year and a half ago. Wow. Um, we still love the fact that we did it. And, I mean... When you see some of them I can't wait to with see the water it. behind Michael's doing this, and then he gets so into it, or he's like, yeah, got his arms out. My favorite out. is when he's hitting a high note. He's like coming into the scene, and he's just like, <laughs> I'm not He is sing a Dean Sealer. I'm <laughs> Dean Sealer. So in the end, he's a superstar in it. He really is. And you go, okay, sit down, Michael. Fine, <laughs> Trevor. <laughs> you didn't want to do this, I was remember? I'm so glad <laughs> because we had so much fun, Aww. but what a riot. And there's so uh, Betsy and Kyle, our friends, went. And Kyle's thumbs in it at one point, and I asked Todd, please don't take it out, because that's part of the experience was Kyle was willing to take this video. Kyle got, made his debut. And he, he said he was enjoying it so much he didn't realize his thumb was there. He's like, this is really good. He was watching you <laughs> instead of actually us. recording. Uh, <laughs> so the whole thing, all the little flubs, and, and so it's a great place to end the, the note of, all these things that we can do it's just a shame if we don't right yeah and is the thing perfect of course not but was it a blast and do we have that forever now yeah. Never. create your own so yeah. cool. create your own fun take the challenge right take the, the challenge. take the toto challenge, challenge. challenge. Yeah. jen jen if you hear us out there in africa take the toto challenge <laughs> yeah. I would love it. we challenge you yes jen, we do. message debbie she'll tell you all about it <laughs> we'll send her the link we'll send her the link yeah well, this was fabulous. Thank you. Thank you for joining us as well. And we look forward to hearing your podcast. And you're going to have to give us the right uh, information to make sure it comes out when we uh, post this. Oh, we will. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, this, this was, was so this was fun. so much fun to all our listeners. If you want to uh, learn a little bit more about Debbie and her presenting powerfully, you can go to her website at DebbieLondonberg.com. Um, and uh, Debbie, thank you. This was awesome. You are uh, welcome. I know we went a little over our time, but we were having so much it. fun. It's so fun, worth yeah. it. And uh, like we like we end all podcasts, have, have a breezing day. day. All right. Thank you. <laughs>